Hey everybody, Big Mess coming to you here from our Silva shop, 530 West Main Street, Silva. And I'm actually standing in front of our iMac and I'm going to go over a few things with you here in a moment. Um, we talked about on our podcast doing a video um, trying to educate a little bit about Streamflows, USGS, Duke website, and things that we look at on a daily basis. Uh, so that way you see what we're looking at and when we're describing that information to you, you have a much, much better understanding. Then you can make an informed decision on whether, you know, the flows are right for you to, to come and fish, whether you're waiting or floating, because it's a lot of information. Right here behind me, you should see our board that we keep in the shop. And it's basically a small selection of some of the creeks and stuff in the area. We can't put them all up there, but these are ones that we commonly get asked questions about. And we take the data off what I'm going to show you here and we put on this particular board. And, and Dale or Bobby or myself, we try to get this posted at least Monday through Friday up on our social media platform, I think on the story, so like on Facebook and Instagram. We put that information up early in the morning there for you so you can quickly take a look at it. But let's say that you don't have access to that and you're trying to do some research on your own and you go to the computer. What we're going to do is I'm going to be you and we're going to dive into the computer screen here momentarily and you'll be able to see the screen and see what we're looking at. Okay. So uh, once we get here to our computer screen, as Bobby's switching that over, this here is the USGS current conditions for North Carolina. So what we do is we type in, I type in NC Streamflow data, which brings us up to this particular screen. Now, when it comes up, you're going to have a lot of the watersheds in North Carolina, but we want to scroll down toward the bottom, and this is going to get us into that Tuckasegee area down here that we're looking for. So one of the most common questions we get asked is, what is the, the CFS here on the Tuckasegee River? So the first one that we look at is the Tuckasegee River at State Road 1172, which is near Cullowee. Um, if you look here, it was updated at a quarter after the hour. The last update was at 12, uh, 15 Eastern Standard Time. And this number right here, 741, that is the cubic feet per second flow of that particular river at that gauge at this time. Um, now, there's a lot of factors that go into that here momentarily, and we'll describe that to you. But I'm going to come over to the far left, and I'm going to click on this blue tab right here. And when I do that, it's gonna take me to another screen. Uh, here, you're gonna see some information that's available for this particular um, site at this gauge itself. One is gonna be your discharge. There's a little graph right here or a box matrix which tells you what the information is. So here, if we look, the most instantaneous recent value was at 741. If we look to the far right, Back in the history of this right here, the highest flow recorded was in 2012 was 892. But if you look to the left, you kind of see what your, your average would be. So we are above average for this time of year for this particular flow. Uh, down below that, you do see your gauge height. The gauge is if you have a tape measure per se, and you are measuring as the water comes up, that's what it's doing. You can see how it dropped down a little below four and a half feet here, and now it's risen up nearly to six feet. So you can see how much we, we gained um, not quite two feet of height as far as the depth of the water right there, but that's because of Duke Energy releasing water. So in this particular gauge here, this is what we're looking at. Now, we do have a saying for the Tuckasegee that east is the beast and the west is the best. Your East Fork flow when Duke releases water is usually around 500 cubic feet per second. West Fork is usually around 225. You combine both those together and it's going to be quite a bit more water. At 741 CFS, there are a few places above the island on South River Road that would be weightable, but you really, really need to know that stream bed really well. You need to use a weighting staff and you have to exercise caution, of course. We're probably not going to take you out there at that flow, uh, but we would float it at that flow. That's no problem. So let's take a look at the gauge on Birdtown, the kind of lefty gauge. Currently, it's flowing at 587. We just recently received over an inch of rain. So I'm going to come here to this particular gauge because it shows us quite a bit more information. So once again, I'm going to come to the hyperlink tab over here beside the kind of lefty. Click on that. It's going to take me to another site. 
And if you look in this particular area here, it gives us quite a bit more parameters that we can look at on this particular site. First of them is gonna be water temperature. I do like to know what water temperature is doing because it does help me understand what the fish may be doing, how they could be reacting. The other thing that this site has, it also has dissolved oxygen. It has uh, pH levels. It has turbidity. Turbidity would be um, the fact that you're looking at, you know, how dirty is the water. Just to remind you folks, the shop is open as I'm going through this here. So you may have, hear some people talking in the background. But, uh, but if you look through here, I'm going to go over here and hit go. And it's going to pull up these other parameters for us. Um, the first thing you've seen, I selected the water temperature, and that's going to be my first graph. So currently you can see the water has actually risen a little bit this morning, the water temp rather. So we're, we're not quite 44. We're getting close to that 44 degree temperature range. Um, so that you know kind of tells me what I need to be expecting as far as the reaction of the trout out there today. Uh, you can see the dips that we had. Uh, back here on November 30th, you can see where we're close to 50, and then by the 2nd of December, we dropped down a little below 37 degrees right through there. So you can see how those nighttime temperatures really affected that. The other thing that we're looking at here is we look at the discharge. This is Mother Nature. There's no dam up here where this particular gauge is. This is stuff coming out of the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, such as your kind of lefty, Bradley Forks, Kephart, Kanati Fork. Uh, places like that, Soco Creeks, um, all your water up Big Cove, which is Raven Fork, Straight Fork. All of that has flowed into this particular area, and this gauge is down around Old Highway 19 as you drive outside Cherokee on your way into Bryson City. Um, so as we scroll down a little bit more, you see that, um, once again, that particular chart that gives you some basic information in there. The average should be around that, you know, in that 400 um, type in there and you can see the gauge height. You can really see how it spiked when we got that rain that came through here the other night. You see how it spiked? And now I caution you that this time of year the water does not drop as fast as it would you know July 12th because we don't have vegetation sucking up the groundwater and you don't have the evaporation going on because it's not as hot. So you can see that curve they talk about flattening the curve with COVID when you start to flatten the curve with the water, it takes quite a bit longer this time of year as it would in the spring or summer, of course. Here, dissolved oxygen, you can see how that is. The colder the water is, the more oxygen is actually in the water, which is healthier for the trout. Then you can also see here turbidity. And with the turbidity, once again, you can see the day that it rained, that we got over an inch. You see how the water got discolored, and you can see how it's really cleared up. So this particular... Um, graph here has a lot of information on it and understand that the reason why all this stuff is not on all the sites is because it takes funding to have these particular sensors uh, in these particular stream gauges where they select this or they I don't say select but they monitor this information so the um, Eastern Band of Cherokee Indian, Indians uh, provide some funding for this particular station here which why that's why there's quite a bit more parameters for this and more information it's all good information okay uh, one of the things that you'll notice that i put on our information for us too is some temperature gauges for the national park so i look at cataloochee creek which is in haywood county and i come up here to the left and i click on that on this particular gauge it does have me it gives me a chance to select the water temperature and by doing so, I do that and I go hit go. And then it's gonna pull up that information right here. And you can see how that water has been, uh, been assigned you a soil wave right here, of course. And that's all relative to your air temperature. Um, as you can see right here, uh, we're 41, a little over 41. It's gonna get down in the low 20s tonight. So I look for that temperature to drop back down around 38, just based upon um, just being born and raised here. Once again, you can kind of see how when the rain it spiked up, you can see how it's fallen. You can kind of see it's not falling real rapidly, rises rapidly, and this time of year it kind of it doesn't fall as fast. Once again, a lot of good information here. 
you know, we should be sub sub 100 CFS this time of year. That is a weightable flow up there in the Catalucci Valley. Uh, but you can see how how high that gauge went up here too. So it was around two and a half feet. It spiked up um, over three feet and it's coming. It's all the way back down right there. Okay, so you can see that information. Um, it's out there. This is what we look at to kind of make us look smarter than we actually are. The Nantahala River at Hewitt, this is the section that they are actually paddling in that lower Nantahala area. There is not a gauge on the upper, of course, but this is your lower Nantahala at Hewitt right here. But uh, certainly understand this is your gauge height and this is your CFS and this is like your mean median over here to the far right hand side here on that. So depending, let's say that you're living um, in Transylvania County and you want to look at something uh, over here, you get into the upper French Broad area, you've got the, you know, the French Broad River at Rosman information here. You got some Davidson River information, Haywood County, you got the West Fork of the Pigeon. Uh, this is the one we look at. This is the one above Lake Logan there. That's a fishable flow, of course, there as well. Some of these have temperature gauges, not all of them do. Uh, but the ones that do, it's really good to know that water temperature before you head out. So you can see all the way down through the state of North Carolina. And you can use this information nationwide because there's these um, gauging stations all over the United States. So potentially if you're in Colorado, you can pull up, you know, stream flow data for Colorado for the particular watershed. Potentially you could have that information there as well. The other part of the equation um, that people ask about, and I think this is the most confusing, is that what is Duke Energy doing and how does that affect the water that I'm going to be fishing? So all I do is I come up here to my plus tab and I type in Duke Energy flow release schedule and just click on that and you can see it pulls up for me. I'm going to come here to this particular page and basically instead of typing in duke-energy.com backslash communities and backslash lakes, just type in you know, flow release schedule. And it's going to come to this particular page here. You see the little kid here kayaking. Looks like he's having a good time out there. But underneath it, there's some information we need to be made aware of. Um, the one that we get asked a lot, are they releasing water? So we come over here and we click the flow release link. And when that opens up, you notice here immediately it gives us the Catawba area. We want to come to this drop down menu and select Nantahala, Tuckasegee area. Here's the meat and potatoes of this whole thing here, folks. We have an East Fork and a West Fork. Let me, I wanna be clear with you, and it's confusing. The water, when it flows through Webster, uh, Cullowee, Webster, all the way down to Bryson City, that's not a fork no more. That's just your Tuckasegee River. The West Fork is coming out of Lake Glenville and your East Fork would be comprised of like Bear Lake, Wolf Lake, Cedar Cliff Lake, Tennessee Lake, Balsam Lake. They actually meet up up there around, um, up in the Tuckasegee community area. That's where the East and the West converge. So everything downstream north of there actually because the Tuckasegee is a northerly flowing um, body of water. That is, it's not a fork no more. It's just the Tuckasegee River. So here you see it gives you a three day window of what potentially they could be doing. So today for the 7th, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tomorrow, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. And it's showing on the 9th, no flow release. Now this can change without prior notice or warning. And that decision is made in Charlotte, North Carolina. Determining factors would be the amount of rain we've got work and maintenance and upgrades that could be going on at any of the dams or the lakes or shoreline management, a flood control uh, as well, and the need for power. As we get into winter time, as more people are you know, heating their homes and stuff, power demand increases, of course. And for those Clark Griswolds of the world, we know what happened when you decorate your home. You know, the nu nuclear plant goes offline and you just lose all the power. So you need this. The West Fork would be Lake Glenville. This would be coming down Highway 107. So if you left Silva and you drove south up toward Cashers, you go right past this up here. Beautiful lake too. They're showing 5 a.m. to midnight basically um, for the next three days. Once again, subject to change. And then the Nantahala, as I mentioned earlier, this is the lower section. You can see their flow schedule here. 
I will caution you that they could have a no flow release here. That does not necessarily mean that no water is dumping through. Um, if they're not generating power, they don't put that there. So be sure to pay attention to what's happening on your stream gauge as well as this particular site here too. Kind of works hand in hand. So you kind of see that. And one of the things I want to point out to you too is where there's a lot of information. It's called Current Lake Levels web page. If you click on this here, it's going to it's going to it's going to take you to current lake levels, and this is going to be all of these lakes here in North Carolina that Duke Energy has something to do with. So we're going to select the Tuckasegee Nantahala area, or my bad, it says Nantahala slash Tuckasegee area. I guess it's alphabetical order. Um, and you're going to see a graph here with a lot of information on it. Um, Tennessee, you, you see all the lakes that's in that particular area right here. So you see your actual lake height, your target, minimum, maximum. We're definitely not in the drought stage, so you see the ND right there. Range, and then date, lake message updated. This is really important. So let's start here with the actual. So if we come over here, we see at Cedar Cliff is currently at 63.6 feet. The target normally would be 98, the minimum would be 96, and a maximum at 100. Um, I know that there's some work going on, and I'm going to get into detail with, with you with that here in just a moment. If we look at Lake Glenville, it's at 86.8, target is 90, with a minimum of 85. But if we go to the far right hand side, we see that they've posted a message on November the 4th at 10.54 a.m. So click on that message, and then you see an um, area here with a red alert that comes up. This is where we look at to see if they're going to be doing any bypasses, um, things like that that could affect the, the water flow negatively or positively for us here. But if you can see here real quick in the first two sentences, basically starting on the 9th, Glenville will be lowered to perform maintenance on the spillway gates. Um, they wanted to get the lake down 12 to 15 feet by November 20th. I knew that didn't happen based upon the tropical systems there. But it tells you that it's basically a three-week lake drawdown. Uh, boat ramps will remain in service. Um, you know, the drawdown and the time required to refill the lake will depend on weather conditions and river inflows, yada, yada, yada. But there's a lot of good information here that you need to be made aware of. So when you're diving into information to make a decision on what you're going to do, be sure to visit this area, especially if you've had a lot of rain. If we scroll down, there's a nice little graph here, blue for water, of course, but you can see where it was here at this point, it was 87.6, and we come over here now, it's at 85. Um, so you can kind of see what's happening with that uh, water there as well. Now, here's the crazy thing about this. If you go back, it takes you back to the Catawba, so you have to hit that drop-down link once again. Nantahala, real, real popular area to fish. If we click over here right fast, it's going to tell us that the lake will be managed below 78 feet through the remainder of the year. Uh, a spillway gate is open at the dam and will spill when lake levels are above 81 feet. So knowing that if the lake gets above 81 feet, water is just going to start coming over. Um, but as of right now, we're not at that particular point. And if we got rain coming in, this may be something you want to take a look at. So this is the area where we go to kind of look and, and see what's happening on the lakes. And this is where I find all that little information that you folks are asking me about on the telephone or any of us here. That's kind of how we educate ourselves and know what's going on. Now, some of you folks may or may not know this, but Duke Energy has been doing some upgrades and stuff up here um, for the relicensing agreement that is required by the federal government. And back at our homepage here for uh, Duke's Lake and Recreation, if we scroll down to the bottom here, I want to look at this permits and shoreline activities. I'm going to hit that link here. And then I want to look at what's going on here in the Nantahala area here. So we're going to click that. And you see this nice pretty picture right here. Over here, if you look at your shoreline management plans, it gives a lot of information on what's going on with that. But let's look over here to underneath the re related links. Let's look at fall 2019 Cedar Cliff Lake drawdown. So I'm going to click that tab. 
and it's going to bring us to another screen here that you can print if you want to. But this is important because this is a two-year project. Um, basically, it tells you that the drawdown in Cedar Cliff Lake is planned starting in early September 2019 and that the lake would be lowered approximately 40 feet below full pond to perform required maintenance at Cedar Cliff Dam and that the construction is estimated to take approximately 24 months. Well, we know how that works out sometimes, right? Um, so lake residents are being provided advance notice to allow us as such time for possible to prepare for the drawdown. Um, this has been a sore subject for a lot of people there. And uh, once again, I remind you that we are open and we got some folks in here doing business. Yeah, we like it, that's what we need. But um, this is something you need to be made aware of. Um, you can see right here that this is gonna take about 24 months. Um, the boat ramps at Cedar Cliff are unusable. Um, here, so you can see that we're basically a year into this project and we've had a lot of rain. I don't really know where they're at in the status of completing this, but they are basically, they're modifying the existing auxiliary spillway channel. They've got to install a new gate system and install an eight and a half foot concrete wall along the crest of the dam. I don't know where they're at on that. I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not there on the job. I can't tell you that. So this is part of what we're going to have to deal with for another 12 months potentially based upon what's uh, going on here with, with the rain and things like this. This here is part of what uh, the relicensing agreement was and this is some things that the federal government requires out of the power company and as they as they do these things, it's for the safety of, of folks downstream to make sure that, you know, we don't have an issue with the dams and things like that. It's definitely safety issues. And we do have to kind of just deal with it and live with it. Um, but these are things that will affect that flow and you need to be made aware of. Um, they don't want you to walk in the door and you, you drive, you know, three hours to fish it and that's the only place you want to fish and it not be fishable. These are some things that are affecting that. So hopefully you understand this and they do make this information available. You just have to go readily find it. That's the thing. Um, it's there. And um, that's how we look like geniuses, even though I'm not a genius. My wife would tell you that. So well, I think a lot of our significant others might tell us that. I did find, I got asked one day, you know, you know, a cubic feet per second. One cubic feet per second equals 448.83 gallons per minute. That's a lot of flow. So when we say exercise caution out there, water is powerful, it's dangerous. Just be made aware of that. Make a very, very smart decision. Don't make an emotional decision on whether you want to hop in the water or not. Within doubt, back out. You know, there's other places to fish other than the Tuckasegee that are close by here in Jackson County. Uh, and even some delayed harvest that's not necessarily in Jackson that are close by that you should check out and fish. That's basically controlled by Mother Nature. So I hope this helps you folks here quite a bit. Um, just to recap, you know, Duke Energy Flow Release Schedule, which gets you to this particular website. And then, of course, uh, the NC Stream Flow Data, which will get you to this particular site. On our website, tuckflyshop.com, we have a hyperlink tab as well, which will uh, get you to that. Uh, also, I'm going to type that in here right quick. It pops right up. A lot of good information on here anyway that you should be made aware of. Um, but uh, let's see here. We got our online store, our blog, tutorials, book a trip, and of course our new travel tab. So you need to be made aware of that here. But let's go over here to, let's see here. Did that travel upstream flow and releases? There it is. I have a blonde moment. I'm not blonde. But you can see right here, stream flow, CFS, and release schedule. You can come here, click this, and it'll take you to that particular site. And we've basically put a little bit of information here for you as well. The one thing, and I hesitated to do this, and my apologies, is let me go back here to the, um, the flow for the Tuckasegee, the Tuckasegee in Cullowee and Bryson City. Bryson City will always be greater than up here. Um, but with that being said, the Tuckasegee delayed harvest stretch in Bryson City is quite a bit wider. So 1,720 is not the same as 1,720 in Cullowee. 
at 1720 there's some places you can fish down there in the bryson city area um, that you can wade and fish okay if we're at 741 in bryson city you're like where's all the water um, but it's a different it's relative to where you're at based upon the width of the water you're you're fishing okay as the water spreads out it's the same way up here at the west fork of the pigeon that's a really really wide watershed in certain places so a 300 flow in some places would be fishable where in other places it would not be so it's all relative to the fishery and the stream bed that you're in at the time so i want to point that out to you there and i just kind of got you know think seeing a bryson city that kind of um kind of made me think about that there right quick and since we're in a website here you can hit our home you can get into our new travel tab right here it talks about our uh, montana trip if you're looking to get out west and do some fishing be sure you check that out um, as well um, those trips are filling up there quite quite quickly so anyway there's our website tuckflyshop.com you can link that way to it or you can do the other two ways so hopefully that helped you folks there i know that was a little bit longer video than normal but i feel like it's one that's important and hopefully at the end of the day this makes you have a little bit better understanding if you still have questions just give us a call 1-828-488-3333 or stop by the shops uh, you know three depot street bryson city we're right across from the train depot we have a real big brown trout out front don't be confused by the uh, other shop down there uh, we are the uh, the oldest fly shop in bryson city you know, your Sims and Orvis and all those good dealers like that. That's us, Scott, and everything. Uh, and then, of course, here in Silva, 530 West Main Street, Silva, 28779. The phone number, you may think you're calling Bryson City. If the phone is busy, it'll ring to Silva or vice versa. Um, I know that confuses some people sometimes, but we, we can help you one in the same at either location. Follow us on Facebook, uh, certainly on Instagram. Uh, and be sure to listen to our podcast, which is the Tuck Cast with a Splash of Bourbon. You can find that on all the major podcasting platforms out there. And, uh, ooh, there's some cool information right there. You're seeing it. So depending on when this video goes live, that's pretty cool to check out. So um, just hit us up. We're here for you. We appreciate you folks. If it wasn't for y'all, we wouldn't be, be here. So with that, I think we're all done. You have a question, hit us up, info at tuckflyshop.com or give me a call. This is Big Mess. You folks take care. I hope y'all catch a lot of fish. This is all Big Mess approved, of course. Y'all take care.